In this video, I'm going to walk through some of the techniques that I explore in the book Data Journalism Heist uh, with some political donations data from the Electoral Commission. This is the page I'm going to get the data from. This is um, a page showing donations and loans to regulated organisations and individuals. In other words, people and organisations that are regulated by this body, which is a body in the UK that regulates elections and political spending. There are limits on uh, what people can spend and there are requirements on what politicians and political organisations have to declare. So what we want to do is use that information to find and tell stories about um, what those politicians are doing, who they're getting money from, who they're giving money to and so on. So I found the data, that's a whole separate challenge. Um, as I go down on this page, if I go down to the data, we can see some information about donations. Now before I start to look to download this information, I need to make sure that we have the right uh, range of data that we're looking for and it's important to look at um, any options to change the scale of the data that's being shown. We can see here that the year is 2023 and the month is February so we're probably going to want more data than that and in this drop down menu we can select other years as well or indeed we can select all years that are covered in the database. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to download uh, 22 years worth of data plus a couple of months from the current year. And I'm going to make sure that I'm getting all the months, not just February for every year as well. And the data being presented here is in uh, actually something called a Tableau um, dashboard or a Tableau table. So this uh, table is being created by a little widget and to download the data it's always worth looking for some sort of download option. On a Tableau dashboard it looks like this. It's across the bottom menu and if I click on that download button uh, sometimes you'll get a pop-up menu that provides some more information and eventually you've got this option to download it in different formats. The format we obviously want is data, so I'm going to click on data and that, here we go, here's that extra page that Tableau brings up. I just need to click download again. So that's going to download it to my machine, um, to my downloads folder, which is my default place for downloads. And this is what that file looks like. One thing I want to draw your attention to here is the fact that that file name ends in .csv. This stands for comma separated values. It's just a, a very general spreadsheet format, a very simple spreadsheet format. And that means that if I double click on this file, it should open in whatever software I have on my machine that uses CSV files, as long as I've got some software. In this case, it's going to be Excel. It's also a file that you can use in Google Sheets. So um, you can either uh, upload this file into Google Drive and then it will open as a Google Sheet when you open it in there. Or you can search for uh, tutorials on how to import this CSV file into an existing Google spreadsheet as well. One other thing to point out, which is that if you are using Safari and you try and download a CSV file, it might just appear in the window as a bunch of text. Um, if that's the case, just don't use Safari, use Chrome or Firefox instead to download the data. So let's have a look at that data now. This is what that file looks like when opened up in Excel. I'm going to zoom in uh, a little bit more so you can see it more clearly. We can see we've got a number of columns here, about 10 or 11, I think it's 11 different columns there, um, covering a range of pieces of, of information. You might also notice this warning across the top of the screen which talks about possible data loss. 
The reason for this is that if you uh, keep the data in CSV format, CSV format can only have one sheet in it. So if you're going to start creating extra sheets, then it won't uh, keep all of those sheets. It will only save one of them. So it's probably a good idea at the start to save your data, save your data, save a copy of your data in a different format. So I'm going to click on that save as button now and I'm going to change the file format to an Excel workbook. This means it can have multiple sheets and this is the, the default format in Excel. Um, it ends in .xlsx these days on older versions of Excel it would end in .xlsx. Uh, XLS, sorry. So I'm going to um, call this something like uh, working copy and click save. And now we are working on an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm just going to cover some of the basic techniques to, to use of spreadsheets to, to find simple stories. Um, filtering, sorting and pivot tables. Now, sorting is a, a really obvious uh, and simple way to bring interesting data to the top. We have here quite a lot of rows of data. If I skip right to the bottom, we can see we have 8,493 rows of data plus a header row. So lots of information that we might want to brace through. But what if we just want to know what's the biggest single donation? Well, we can sort on the appropriate column. That column is column K here with the value of the donation. So to sort some data, I just need to make sure I am in that column, in the column that's of interest to me. Go to the data menu up here in your spreadsheet and there should be three buttons for sorting. Ignore the big one. You want to use one of these two smaller sorting buttons. Uh, the one that says ZA will sort from largest to smallest. The one that says AZ will sort from smallest to largest and it will tell you that if you hover over them. So if I click on this ZA button it will sort the whole spreadsheet by the column that I'm in. Now straight away we see something odd. We see that this column is now full of hashes. All this means is that the values in these cells are too big to show in the column width that we currently have. So we just need to resize those columns to make it possible to see the contents. And to do that you hover between two column letters, so between K and L, you'll see that the cursor changes from an arrow to a vertical line and a double-headed arrow going across those. Once you see that double-headed arrow, you can click and drag to make the column bigger or smaller. Or you can just double-click and it will resize to the widest uh, it needs to be to show the biggest value there. So we can see the biggest single donation here is £491,322.09. And that donation was made in December 2009 um, by the Irving Unionist Club to the Scottish Union, Unionist Association Trust. We can also see it was made in cash. There are some donations here that are not in cash. So we can explore those later on. But that's how sorting can very quickly tell us what was the biggest donation of the last 22 years. We can also sort from smallest to largest. What's the smallest possible donation that someone has given? Same principle, this time we click on the A to Z button make sure we're in the column of interest and here we can see two donations of nothing at all. Both of them in 2009 and we can see the purpose here not not recorded for one of them. Um, we've got some meeting here 
both of them are visits. So probably a lot less newsworthy, both of them to MPs. Um, but we might still want to ask some more questions about um, these particular donations. Now we can't just sort on uh, money, on numbers, we can sort on other columns as well. For example, the date that something was reported. Dates should be stored as, as numbers in spreadsheets and you can tell if they are because they will be right aligned. You'll notice the cash numbers here are right aligned, these dates are right aligned, but the text is left aligned. And that's an easy way to see the difference. Now, as long as dates are stored as numbers, they can then be sorted from earliest to latest. And again, we can sort by clicking A to Z, that will bring the earliest dates to the top. So the very first donation recorded here uh, was reported on the 2nd of January 2001 and accepted the day before, and that was for £30,000. The most recent, in this case, the 17th of December 2023, which is quite tricky given that I'm recording this in September 2023. So again, that might raise questions where you might want to find out, well, how can someone have reported something in the future on a date that hasn't yet passed? It may well be that this is a mistake given that the um, the uh, donation was accepted on the 17th of December 2022. Perhaps someone has misentered a year here. So sorting on dates probably less interesting, but it might be useful if we want to bring the most recent events to the top. Those are going to be the most newsworthy. We can also sort alphabetically. Perhaps we want to sort donors to find those with the um, with names beginning with A or names beginning with Z. But again, probably less interesting here. More useful perhaps is if we are able to filter. So yes, we want to know what is the biggest donation, but a donation from a few years ago is not going to necessarily be newsworthy. Perhaps we want to filter down to a particular date range or a particular individual. To do that, you click on the filter button here, which is next to the sort buttons we focused on up to now. When you click on the filter button, you should see the top row of your data now has a collection of drop down menu buttons like so. Um, for numerical values, we can scroll down all the different values here, but we can also use um, some options like greater than a particular value or less than a particular value as well, or maybe just the top 10 values in this list. For the um, donation type, this is especially useful. We might only be interested in cash donations or we might only be interested in visits. And for dates, we might be interested in donations between certain dates. So let's click on the filter on date accepted and what we can do is unselect all the years and let's just focus on 2023. And we can see there are just 19 in that year. Uh, a quick way, let me see if I can resize this slightly so you can see at the bottom when you select a group of cells it will tell you at the bottom how many cells you've selected so in this case 19 cells so we've got 19 donations that were accepted <clears throat> in 2023 you'll notice that these are reported in january and february so that's uh, probably going to be as recent as they have been able to be reported so or, or at least published i should say um, it may well be that later donations have not yet been published. So in terms of those donations, we can see the biggest were two of £50,000. 
So you might do a story about, you know, this these two donations were given in the latest data, according to the latest data. Let's turn that filter off and let's uh, apply another filter now, which is let's look at the donee. So let's look at um, a particular individual. Um, let's just pick Zach Goldsmith MP, for example. Let's say he was in the news for some reason. We could do a story about the donations to, to this individual. In this case, there's only one. What if our story was about Yvette Cooper? Well, we've got quite a lot here. We could do a story about how those donations have changed over time. Who are the big uh, donors giving a lot of money to this particular individual? What types of donations they are? And so on. To uh, to, to clear a filter, you can simply click the filter button again to remove it and then click it to start again. So let's just, there we go. Um, so let's look at uh, visits, for example. We could untick all of these and click on visits and we could just do a story about visits and where people are visiting because we can see there's a whole group of different destinations, which destinations are um, inviting politicians, uh, paying for politicians to travel to those areas. In this case, a visit to Victoria, which was uh, to the value of £38,000, and it was for promoting gender diversity in politics and business. That was the biggest, uh, the biggest value of any visit, and that was to the former Prime Minister Theresa May, who may well... Um, have been Prime Minister at the time, although I don't think so. So that's filtering. Filtering, especially when combined with sorting, can be very useful for finding stories very quickly, or at least story leads. And it's really important to emphasise that uh, and in a lot of cases, what you're doing here is identifying what is happening in order that you can pick up the phone and get some quotes to add some extra information about why that's important and why that is happening. But in addition to filtering and sorting, there's one other extremely powerful tool to cover in this video, and that is the pivot table. One of the obvious questions we would like to ask here is, okay, we can identify the biggest single um, donation or the visit that uh, was of uh, the highest value, um, but there's more than one donation here. There's more than one trip to each country. So we want to know, you know, what's the total value of donations to a particular uh, individual and which individual has the, the biggest total overall and um, which country has the most visits overall. And this is something that pivot tables can help us to do very quickly. To create a pivot table, go to the insert menu and click on the pivot table button at the start of that menu. Before you click on that, make sure you are somewhere in your data. You have to be somewhere in your data in order for it to know what data it's going to use. And when you click pivot table, it will take that as a starting point and look for the edges of that data, tell you what range it's assuming contains the data. You can ignore the dollar signs. This basically means from cell A1 to K 8494. Click OK and in a new sheet it will create an empty pivot table. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that and on the right there's an area where you can start to build this table so I'll start to fill it in. So if we wanted to know which donor had donated the most money we would take donor here, which is where you have a list of all of the columns in your data, and you put the focus of your question into the rows. And we will now get a row for every unique donor, no matter how many times they appear in 
the data. What do we want to know about these donors? Well, that's going to be the money and that's what we put in this values area here. So the value, as it happens, is going to go in the values. So this is the money. If you put a numerical column into this values box, then it will add up the numbers for each item in the rows. So in this case, all of the, uh, the donations from this particular individual add up to 2,000. All of the donations from this individual add up to 14,750 and so on. And again, we can sort the data in exactly the same way by clicking somewhere in the column we want to sort by, go to the data column and press one of these two buttons, Z to A or A to Z. So we can now see the biggest single donor is Lord David Sainsbury, who's donated over £5 million. If we wanted to shift our focus away from donors to the people receiving the donations, the donees, we just click and drag donor out of the rows and click and drag donee into that rows box. Now it's going to revert to sorting alphabetically by donee. So again, we need to sort it by column B by clicking somewhere in that column and clicking Z to A. And we can see the biggest recipient here is an organization called Progressive Britain Limited, which um, also received around five million pounds. They're way ahead of the second biggest recipient, which is the Liberal Democrats Party. And the third recipient is the Mayor of Birmingham, Andy Street. So he's had over £2 million in donations. Now, once we find out this information, we might go back to our original do uh, data and we might start to filter it on you know, that particular individual. Um, we can scroll down and find that person, or we can just search for them. And it will actually apply that filter as we're searching. So I'll just do that again. Click on filter, click on the drop down menu. And in this search box here, as you start typing, you'll notice the list of options gets narrower, these are all ticked, and behind your filter you can see the data starting to be filtered, so at the moment it's showing all the Andes, but if I carry on typing until there's only one option ticked, then that's the only option that's going to be shown underneath. So now we can start to see all of those donations we might be able to tell a story here about uh, how that's changed over time. But let's go back to the pivot table and um, let's do some other things as well. We can, uh, we were interested in visits. So let's take the donee out and let's, um, find, where's it gone? Destination. So destination is the column where it listed the particular uh, place that someone was visiting. So that, that kind of paying for someone to visit a location is considered a donation uh, because it has a value. And we can see how all the different places where people have been invited and, and uh, visited. And we can immediately start to see a potential problem here, which is that, uh, first of all, we have... Uh, a, a place which clearly isn't a place, so 6,500 isn't a destination, so there's some um, incorrect data here. We can see that there are two places here which have the same place, but they're being treated as different because this one has an accent over O and this one doesn't, so that means it's treated as two um, different entities, so we'd need to clean up this data to make that consistent. And we can also see Abu Dhabi appears in a number of contexts here, uh, uh, sometimes on its own and sometimes along with other destinations as well. So we might need to, uh, that needs cleaning up as well. 
But we've got an idea here and it's telling us the value of those uh, of those trips. Uh, again, we could sort that. So the, um, the biggest value here is blank because these are non-visits. So we, we can ignore that. Uh, but Hong Kong is the area that um, accounts for the greatest value. Perhaps because it is very far away, flights are expensive to Hong Kong. So maybe a better um, thing to look at is the number of times each of these destinations appears. To do that, we need to drag something into this values box that is not numerical. So we don't want to sum, but we want to count how many times uh, something appears. So let's drag value out. And what we can do is simply drag destination in again into values. And what that will do is it because it's a text column, it's going to count how many um, cells there are for each of these uh, countries, each of these destinations. So we can see that Abu Dhabi on its own appears three times. Abu Dhabi and Dubai appears three times as well. Afghanistan appears once, but Afghanistan and Kuwait appears once as well. Now, before we went any further, we'd probably want to go back and clean the data a bit so that um, we, we've got some more accurate numbers. But um, once we'd done that and we wanted to see, OK, which destination appears the most, again, we can sort it here and we can see Israel in the West Bank is uh, far and away number one here. It's it's. Um, almost double the next highest entry and in fact it's more than double once you factor in at least two of the different um, contexts in which Israel appears. So Israel generally accounts for at least 251 of these visits. Um, now there might be other Israels lo lower down, we can see one here for 24, we can see one here for another 23, so this is where the cleaning is going to be quite important. And equally it might be that the USA appears in different forms because we've got Washington DC, which is obviously not a country, we've got Washington DC, USA, there might be other parts of the US here as well, New York and USA. Um, so it may well be that all of those end up adding up to more than the Israel visits. We don't know until we've cleaned the data, but what we do know is we've got some clues here to start to follow and we've got an idea of where we're heading with a potential story and what we need to do to the data to find out the answer to that question that we're starting to ask. So that's how to use pivot tables, how to use filtering and how to use sorting to find stories in data. You'll notice we've non done no calculations at all. We've not written any formulas. All we've done is clicked buttons. And in fact, just clicking those buttons can help you find the majority of data journalism stories and often very quickly. So when you've got a new data set, um, this is a very good way to find stories quickly in order to turn around a story in time for it to still be newsworthy. Now one final point about doing that and that is that um, pivot tables can only be done where your data is detailed enough so that individual entities appear more than once. So in our data countries appear more than once Donors appear more than once, donees appear more than once, categories appear more than once. Um, if that isn't the case in a data set, then a pivot table is not going to tell you anything. Uh, you cannot pivot data that doesn't uh, have anything that can be aggregated, that doesn't have anything appearing more than once. So if that's the case, it's likely that someone else has already done the pivot table and what you are seeing is the actual pivot table that summarizes some data. In that situation, you can only sort it or filter it to look at the particular entities in that table that are of interest to you.